Hello, Hello Internet, Internet, and welcome, welcome to, to Game, game theory. theory. Okay, I know that was the freaking worst impression of MatPat ever. Shut up. But let me tell you, that intro is so appropriate for this episode of Hello Neighbor Theory that I, I, I just... I don't know. We have stumbled upon probably, and I, I really truly believe this in, to, in my heart, okay? Okay, guys, you see, I have, I got the neighbor tags. I got the neighbor dog tags out for this one. That's how special this episode is. We have stumbled upon probably and arguably the most intense, like, and close theory to explain, you know, a lot of things, not everything, but a lot of things that happen in Hello Neighbor and why they happen, okay? It's, it's gonna get, it's crazy. It is, it's, <laughs> It's crazy, that's all I'm gonna say. Now I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a warning. This episode is gonna be kind of text heavy, but it's actually it's, it's absolutely necessary in order to read you guys a lot of things. And uh, this this video is definitely inspired by Game Theory. You guys know I love MatPat. In fact, <laughs> in fact, I would absolutely love it if MatPat saw this. You can share it with him. Please do share it with him. That way, I mean, because that's how crazy I think this theory is. If he's planning on doing another Hello Neighbor Theory, I really would love for him to use this video to whatever, I don't care. Really, this, I'm not the one that came up with this theory. In fact, one of you scrubs actually left a comment on my last video explaining how, you know, explaining, what, you know, this, this whole thing that I'm going to talk about in this video, okay? So let's jump, let's just jump right into it. But before we jump into this theory and really get into the, the thick, juicy stuff, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever, like, wondered what inspired Hello Neighbor? Because usually games are usually, okay, inspired by other games. Okay, let's take uh, Yandere Simulator for uh, instance. That was inspired by the game Hitman, and also inspired by the game Persona. Or the series Persona, I should say. And I- and also a little bit of Metal Gear Solid. So basically, lots of stealth games have inspired that game. Let's think of Tattletale. I'm pretty sure that Tattletale was inspired, and I think everyone can see this, by Five Nights at Freddy's with the jump scares and stuff like that. But more importantly, Furbies. Furbies, I mean, come on, Tattletales and Furbies, they look so freaking alike. Bendy and the Ink Machine, we all know Bendy and the Ink Machine, MatPat did a theory on that, which was really, really crazy, and I believe it was spot on. Uh, it was, it was, you know, uh, inspired by that animation studio that was, I guess, in competition with Disney. And especially since we've seen episode 3 of Bendy and the Ink Machine, we've seen how true that actually is, because they literally had a cartoon. They looked exactly like it. So this theory that we're going to talk about is, is I believe, really what inspired the game Hello Neighbor. Because if, if you could find something else that's closer, then please let me know. Please leave it in the comment section, because I will do another video on it, alright? I need some views. One of you amazing scrubs called Probably Crazy, which you probably have to be crazy to, to come up with this theory. I'm just kidding. Probably Crazy says, Mike, I have a theory. Please read this. It would mean a lot. Sorry for spam. Thank you for spamming. This is very appropriate for you to spam such a freaking awesome theory. You were asking why in the earth would the neighbor have such a ridiculous house? And uh, last episode, that's exactly what I said. Why does he have a ridiculous house? I've questioned this many times when we played the game because his house is insane, ridiculous. In multiple of, the, you know, in all the builds, his house has always been so ridiculously crazy. And I always thought to myself, who builds this? <laughs> why? Like, what, what possesses someone to build such a freaking house. And you know, first off, we always thought that maybe it was the shadow or it was the devil. You know, there's lots of theories that we could really go into, but we'll, maybe we'll get into that. They go on to say, well, this kind of house has existed in real life in California. I live in California. I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared the neighbor's gonna walk through my door right now. Oh crap, well, he's knocking. <laughs> you guys, you guys remember that video I did of uh, <laughs> calling hello neighbor? He actually came to my house. Well, you know what? He might actually come to my house now. I am legit scared. Guys, help me. You guys thought that was a joke. It wasn't a joke. He came to my house. I, I'm so scared. And so, of course, after reading this, I decided to look it up. And it's called the Winchester Mystery House. Why don't we take a little gander at that? Well, first, let's, I guess, continue reading the comment. They said the owner's husband and grandfather were the owners of the Winchester gun. And uh, I looked that up. It's actually the Winchester rifle, which this is gonna blow your mind, okay? This is this is gonna freaking blow your mind because it blew my mind, and this is what caused me. Like I I was I was reading this minutes before I decided to make this video. This is what the gun looks like. Does that ring a bell, guys? Does that does that look like any gun that would possibly be in a certain game that you've played that I'm making a video about? 
Oh my god, this is insane. Now, we, we could say this is a coincidence, but god, I mean, they, they're both rifles in the game. Like, in the in the game, it's like a shotgun or a shotgun or rifle. Uh, I, would, or I always said it was a shotgun, but no, it's a rifle. I think I just got that wrong. This is just one of the coincidences, okay? Alright, you're gonna get even more freaking creeped out by this. Well, you know, whatever. So, it's a gun used in the, in the war to great amounts. After her husband and daughter died, she went into, uh, to a therapist and counselors for help. They told her that the spirits of those killed by the gun would haunt her to her death. Unless she kept building onto her house, and she did. You can't make this stuff up! This is insane! And they said, this just makes me wonder if the neighbor is fearing the same thing. The neighbors would worry that the spirits of the children he harmed, kidnapped, theoretically, may harm him for what he did. Hey, but that's just a theory. <laughs> the crazy part about it is in the, the episode before last, we confirmed that there is a girl and a boy that, have, that are missing. Now, there's some pieces of the puzzle missing, but for sure, these people, are, they've gone missing. They're probably dead. We don't really know for sure, but definitely there was a missing poster on a police station, which really signals th these are the people because like, everyone knows that someone's been kidnapped and put in a basement. It's got to be these, these children. Now, I definitely should explain that I don't think that I, I think the game is inspired by this story. I don't believe that it's like, you know, word for word is going to be the story of Hello Neighbor, but it's got so many sim like similarities that it just has to it has to be close at least. Now I find it interesting that this Winchester mystery house is in California. I don't know where Hell and Abers considered to be. To me it's just way too freaking wacky and it just looks so weird. I wouldn't say it was in California, but if it is, I don't know. Honestly what what it gives it gives me a feel of like I don't know like Louisiana. I don't quote me on that one, but that's what it gives me the feeling of some place like that, not California. But I guess that part's really not important and plus we have the Russian, so maybe it's in freaking Russia, I don't know. I don't go too in depth with in depth with these theories. Uh, I could but that that would take a lot of time and I don't have that kind of time now I know what you're probably thinking we're gonna look at this house And it's gonna be exactly like the neighbor's house it's gonna be freaking insane crazy and wacky It's not as wacky, but the whole premise of it the whole idea of this house is just as crazy as the neighbor's house so, like, how can they not be related? Let's see if we can actually go on Google Maps and look at this. The cool thing about doing these YouTube videos is that you guys, like, tell me these things, and I would have never known about them. Okay, so here's what it looks like in 360 view. This, it really looks insane. Apparently, this is a place that's considered to be haunted, and it's also a uh, tourist uh, zone. Like, you can go there. You, I don't know if, you have to, if it's free or not. I would love to freaking go there. Like, go that in-depth into making a neighbor theory to where I actually go there. That'd be cool. But as you can see, this house was made, I think it was made, what, 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 what year was this house built? Oh, construct in 1884, and it's uh, in a Victorian mansion. You can definitely see that, uh, yeah, 1800s for sure. Now, see, I think this is where we really start to, like, uh, see, like, similarities, but, I mean, if you're looking at the, the interior and you're thinking like, oh, this is gonna look just like Hello Neighbor's house or whatever like that, it's it's not. It's not gonna look like that. But just from looking at something like this, like you can see the differences between each room. That's one thing that I think carries over to Hello Neighbor is that like every room is kind of unique. And uh, the crazy thing about this is that, let's see where it says this. We'll go into more detail, but basically the, the woman who owned this mansion uh, I, well, I guess Sarah Sarah Winchester who owned this this mansion had a lot of money She was rich quite clearly and she didn't know when to stop uh, Basically building onto the mansion. She never stopped and so I think a lot of things are different and that's just like hello neighbor It's so in insane We got a nice little garden. This place looks it looks really nice It's absolutely insane. It's something that would be uh, out of a cartoon now, now. Let's be honest here Let's be real for a second if 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 the hello neighbor house were actually real it would freaking just fall over, right? I got something to tell you. You know, jumping around the story without getting too text heavy, before the 1906 earthquake, so remember it was built in the 1800s, the house had been seven stories high. Seven stories. That's insane. So according to this website, uh, I guess answers.com, very uh, reputable site. I have no idea to be honest. How many stories does a mansion need to have to be a mansion? Four, the answer's four stories. I, I don't know. I. I don't know if that's the case, to be honest. Well, apparently there's lots of definitions for, for mansions, like uh, some people say it's a square feet, or some people say it's just how unique it actually is. Uh, I don't know. 
I really, really don't know, but just seven stories. Imagine half living in a seven story house. So that's crazy enough, but what really uh, intrigues me is the reason behind why she wanted to build her house so crazy in the first place. So let's get to that part here. So her husband, who actually died uh, of tuberculosis, was William uh, Wirtz Winchester, and he was the treasurer of the Winchester Repeating uh, Arms Company. And, uh, that's- So, I mean, I'm guessing that they- His family are the ones that- That designed these firearms that killed many, many people. Which is, I guess, the short story, because I'm not gonna go too into depth with it. But typically, people that- That design, uh, nuclear weapons, or, you know, really anything, they're, they're usually guilty. They have a guilt- A guilty conscience, because, like, at the same time, it's like, they're, they're, they're designing these weapons for safety, but at the, but, you know, on the other hand, it's also for killing people, and, you know, you feel like you're responsible for all these lives taken, and things like that. So since, you know, that family came, th you know, from the, the makers of these, these, these guns, the, the property and mansion, I guess, were claimed by many, including Winchester herself, she lived there. <laughs> To be haunted by the ghosts of those killed with Winchester rifles. Under Winchester's day-to-day -day guidance, it's from the ground up construction proceeded around the clock, by some accounts, without uh, inter interruption, until her death on September 5th, 1922. So, like, they just never stopped building things on it until she died. I, I guess she never stopped, you know, building things. And when she died, the work stopped. So, like... I, in my head, I'm just thinking of this lady just constantly hammering at things and building things. And so she died and it stopped. Or maybe she had workers. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sarah Winchester's biographer, Howard, claims that Winchester routinely dismissed workers for months at a time to take such rest as I might. And notes that this flies in the face of claims by today's mystery house proprietors, proprietors that work at the ranch was ceaseless for 38 years. So it seems like there's a lot of rumors and stuff that go goes on here. But it's it's the most interesting is that it's haunted, and then we got we look at Helen Aber, and then we see things that would represent ghosts and shadows and things like that. It's just it's hard for this to be a coincidence. I hope you guys understand like what I'm saying. So let's go back to the neighbor. How would the neighbor get the funds in order to build these things? Because obviously he's not that supernatural. You got to get the funds somewhere to build this crazy, uh, just stupid house. Is it possible that the neighbor's rich, just like Sarah Winchester? She inherited more than $20.5 million at that time, which is really a lot of money. Jumping back to MatPat, this is like Luigi's Mansion. Like, you know, I, I remember watching that episode about like, you know, Luigi, Luigi has to be freaking filthy rich. <laughs> I don't know, I just think that's a little funny. So her daughter and husband both died at uh, a Boston medium? What the heck does that mean? Tabloids from that time claimed that at some point after her infant daughter and husband both died, that sucks, a Boston medium told her while supposedly channeling her late husband that she uh, should leave her home in New Haven and travel west where she must continuously build a home for herself and the spirits of people who had fallen victim to Winchester rifles. What? Oh, so that's interesting. So she moved. So she moved away to California because of, of, uh, because she thought the other house was haunted. Wait, I'm, I'm confused. Oh, I see now. So when she died and her, her daughter died, uh, they didn't even live in that house. So this Sarah girl must have been into spirits and, like, into that superstitious stuff. So she went to a medium who, I guess it says right here, while supposedly channeling her late husband, that she should leave her home. So I, I'm guessing her husband says, supposedly said that she should leave her home and go west and build this gigantic house to to hold to house the spirits that all these rifles killed. This is a crazy story. What the heck? So these a lot of these things are just really claims, and a lot of people, you know, they, they went all freaking Matt Pat on this theory. <laughs> Though it is possible she was simply seeking a change of location and a hobby during her link, you know, lengthy depression. Well, yeah, I mean, when your freaking infant dies and your husband dies, you're gonna get a little depressed and like. Like, what the heck do I do with my life now? That would be a really uh, traumatic event that would happen to somebody. And maybe so much so that she thought it was spirits, because she went to a medium. But for someone to build such a freaking ridiculous, like, looking house, she's got to think that it's, like, haunted or something, you know? She basically took all of her fortune and just, like, said, I screw it. I'm just going to build this stuff. Look at this. Look at this car. And this leads me back to what would possess the neighbor to build such a stupid, crazy, ridiculous looking home. Maybe perhaps the same reason why she was possessed to build such a crazy, stupid-looking home. 
I mean, it's fancy looking. I mean, it's a big house. It's just, it's a little ridiculous. It just goes on and on. Let's see if we can get an overhead view of this. This is the overhead view. So this is not even counting when it was seven stories high. That's how far it expands. It's like, it looks like an amusement park. That's what it looks like. I wish it had older pictures when it was seven stories high. So in 1884, she purchased an unfinished house, a uh, farmhouse in Santa Clara Valley and began building her mansion. Carpenters were hired and worked on the house day and night until it became a seven story mansion. She did not use an architect and added onto the building in haphazard fashion. So the home contained numerous uh, oddities such as doors and stairs that go nowhere. Come on, windows overlooking other rooms <laughs> and stairs with odd sized risers. I don't know what risers are. Many accounts attribute these oddities to her belief in ghosts. That sounds pretty freaking legit to me. Okay, this article also goes on to like what her house is actually made out of. I don't see how that's really relevant to this, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'll try to link this uh, Wikipedia article for you guys, just in case you want to really, you know, look into it for yourself. There's 161 rooms, including 40 bedrooms. Well, yeah, obviously, hell, the neighbor's house is not that big, but God, uh, <laughs> it's still just as ridiculous. There's 47 fireplaces. Over 10,000 panes of glass, 17 chimneys, two basements, two basements, oh, there's basements. I guess we could say where, where the neighbor's, you know, house, you know, is not as crazy as this one as far as how many rooms it has. It makes up for it in the basement. The basement is just as crazy. We don't even, we're not even really getting into how crazy the basement is in Hell of a Neighbor. If I learned that the basement in this house is just as crazy, uh, it's done. It's done. This is Hell of a Neighbor, okay? Again, this is all speculation, but if I find out, if I find out that this girl built this freaking crazy basement, it's gonna be hell of a neighbor for sure, without a doubt. Again, I hope MatPat does a theory on this. I hope that he's already in process of doing this. Again, send this video to him because he, I don't care. Like, like I said, I didn't come up with this, you know, freaking, uh, probably crazy came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ironic, isn't it? There's gold and silver chandeliers, hand uh, in played park, I don't know what that is, and a vast array of colors and materials. That's why I was saying that like each room is kind of unique, just like in Hello Neighbor. Like the wallpapers are different. It's so, so odd. There was only one working toilet for Winchester, but all the other restrooms were decoys to confuse spirits. What the heck? What was this girl into? This is also the reason why she slept in a different room each night. She must have been paranoid. Here's another interesting thing. There are also three elevators, including an Otis electric and one of which was powered by a rare horizontal hydraulic elevation piston. Yeah, that sounds like those like lifts and stuff that they, we have a hello neighbor. So when you click on the Otis electric and one of which was powered by a rare horizontal hydraulic, um, apparently Otis is an elevator company and they really specialize in vertical transport systems. This is this is an Otis escalator. Are they all escalators? Did, did this did this chick have a freaking escalator in her home as well? Because uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, it's a little odd that there happens to be an escalator in Hello Neighbor. If you guys remember that one room, there's an escalator. It's covered, but there's an escalator there. Okay, there's too many conveniences for this to be a convenience. Like <laughs> I know I'm kind of just going through this episode I'm repeating myself, but this is really interesting to me. I hope it's just as interesting to you guys. Many of the stained glass windows were created by the Tiffany company. Some were designed specifically for her and others by her, including a spider web window that featured her favorite web design and the repetition of the number 13. Isn't there a movie called 13 Ghosts? And isn't that about like this big like house, right? I think so. That's a whole nother theory. God, the movie's old, by the way. <laughs> so she was obsessed with the number 13. I wonder if the neighbor's obsessed with any numbers. That would definitely further this uh, theory. What in God's name is wrong with these people? It says right here that this Tiffany person, or Tiffany himself, apparently was a person that designed these windows or something. So they designed a window, a very expensive window, that when the sunlight st struck it, a rainbow would literally go across the freaking room uh, because of all these prismatic crystals. But they installed it inside the house where there was no light exposure. Like, what do you- why? Why do you even do that? So when Sarah died, I guess it was- it went to her niece, and then they just sold it. <laughs> like, they, they- they just freaking sold it. Th that must have been a, a handsome profit, I tell you what. It supposedly took six trucks working eight hours a day for six weeks to remove all of the furniture from the home, an account disputed by Winchester's biographer. And she made no mention of the mansion in her will. And appraisers considered the house worthless due to damage caused by the earthquake. 
Dang, I wanted to, I want to see pictures of it before the earthquake though. Uh, let's do a, a quick search and see if we can find that. Dang, that's ins that's ridiculous. This is more like a castle than anything. Yeah, I think it's more safe to say this is a castle. Looks like freaking Disneyland. That must have been devastating. Imagine building all of that and then a freaking earthquake just comes tears it down. So I take back what I said about them selling it for a lot of money. They only sold it for $135,000 because of all the damage that the earthquake apparently did to it. And then eventually the people that owned it after that just turned it to a tour guide. Or to a tour, you know, place to tour. And this place even has a rifle museum. Like... <laughs> It's, it's, it's really crazy. So this is really cool as well. In the popular culture section, um, the creator of The Evil Within, I played that game, it's a pretty cool game, actually used the house, apparently, to, to inspire, uh, the, the game. Which that makes sense because in that game, I mean, a lot of crazy stuff happens. Basically, like, that game, I think, I, I, I didn't finish it because, but a lot of stuff happens in your mind and all of a sudden you're transported to these, all these weird places. Which happens to, you know, that happens to Hell and Neighbor as well. A lot of these weird things happen. So here's just some of the pictures. This must have been one of the toilets to, to ward off the spirits. Like what what kind of mindset do you have to have to believe that? Like to to think that these toilets are going to ward off spirits. Just like if everything is so different. It doesn't look like the same house with every like picture you go to. I guess the thing that makes it really uh, you like the same is that it's all so weird. Those carvings <laughs> The carvings on these on these walls is a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie. That's like that that crap is actually in Hell and Neighbor. Like there's tears on the walls, like a lot of stuff, I guess damage from the earthquake. They need to make a legit horror game about this or something, don't you think? I mean I guess they have the evil within, right? But this is ter this is scary. I I it would be really interesting to actually go there. I mean it's in my state, so I I might freaking do that one of these days who knows but I think I'm gonna go ahead and end that there guys let me know down in the comment section what you think if, if you have a better better theory or if you think that this is stupid this is not related at all please let me know I would love to know each and every one of your guys thoughts again send this to Matt Pat because if he doesn't know about it he needs to know about it because I really personally enjoy his videos and uh, I would love for him to actually make one on that. And if the Scrub Army could get him to make a video about it, like that would be seriously uh, insane. I want to give a huge thank you to Probably Crazy, still funny, for leaving this comment because uh, we've got some pretty cool theories before and like you guys thank you for all your support but this one has got to be the most craziest one uh, by far. So anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this episode, leave a like. If you want to see more theory videos I would love to do more on other games, you know. Not as good as MatPat, but you know, still something. Just be talking about it. It's just really interesting to me. And uh, I guess that's why I like his videos so much. Sorry if this video is a bit different. Usually I have a different format to my videos, but I wanted to just have this video to explain everything else. Anyway, guys, uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video once again. Subscribe for more stuff like this, and I'll see you scrubs in the next one. Bye, guys.